You're very welcome. It's a brand new week on Captain Television. And it's still the program, The Press, this morning. So, like I promised you earlier, I'm Mickey Atta. I'm not alone in the studio right now. For this segment, we are going to have a guest who is actually an erudite scholar. I was informed that our guest is a United Nations Ambassador for Peace. Hence, his title is Ambassador but he is so many things in one. He is, we have a wonderful gentleman in the studio. He is the director of studies in the Abuja School of Social and Political Thought. He is also a pen pusher. He's a columnist and he has his column. You check it out in Saturday Sun and you'll also find him again in the Tuesday's Telegraph, the new Telegraph. It's my pleasure indeed to introduce to you right here in our studios, live for you, the person of Ambassador Clem Aguyi. Ambassador, good morning and welcome. Good morning, Mickey, and um, thank you for having me in your studio this morning. Thank you for sparing the time to be with us. We have so much to talk about. We actually wanted to to do things on the foreign scene but just before we dive over there let me take something that was a little bit worrisome when i was taking the headlines this morning if you don't mind and that is the threat of an impending strike coming up from the nlc they are giving the state governors december 1 as the deadline for which if minimum wage is not paid they are going to embark on nationwide strike action what are your thoughts about that um i will say that um the minimum wage issue i i should be thinking should have been a settled issue by now at least the minimum wage but um the labor union had to be specific of what they're asking of what they're asking are they asking for the way the minimum wage is aggregated because I understand that in some states, they are just basing the minimum wage. Why people are still earning, other people at other levels are still earning what they are earning. Was that part of the negotiation with the federal government that when you put this as minimum wage, 70,000, mm -hmm. some states are paying 80, some are paying 85, 90, depending on their post. But even that is not even enough. But what did you agree? What did you negotiate for? You see, I think organized labor should be able to get in experts that understand negotiations so that they will be able to take these things holistically because all these piecemeal actions, all these piecemeal uh, negotiations, all these piecemeal strikes is affecting the nation generally. So is either you go in to negotiate and you negotiate comprehensively with clear understanding of what you are negotiating because right now as i speak to you many people are no longer trusting the labor union in terms of their demands True. because of the frequency of their strikes how they back down on those demands and the, uh, the ordinary nigerians just feel well that is not so um, for a game of a game of cards mm -hmm. And they don't like it. And I think uh, it's high time the labor union strategize on how to go into negotiation with the federal government and be clear mm -hmm. with what they are negotiating. Mm -hmm. You don't negotiate after negotiation, <laughs> especially when even the one you negotiated has got to be been implemented. But I will urge every state government that is in Nigeria, I think every state should be able to afford to pay the minimum wage of 70,000 naira. It's, 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 it's not a big deal. All they need to do is to stop the corruption and the wastage in the system. The money is there to and pay. And the extravagant spending. And the extravagant... Uh, wasteful not, spending. Wasteful spending. They should White just elephant cut, projects. Cut it off. When you cut off those things, you discover that there is enough money to pay even beyond the minimum wage. But I keep saying, it's not about paying people one million naira mm -hmm. that can buy a bag of rice. I was in... Um, to the two weeks ago, Benin Republic. Okay. And I found out that the CIFA is stronger than the Naira. 
Very much. This Sifa is now stronger than the Naira. Stronger than the Naira. Even the Ghana cities. Stronger than the Naira. I bought a, I bought a plate of food for 30, 30 Sifas. And the 30 Sifas translate to almost like uh, 30 something thousand Naira. I stayed in a hotel. Wow. That I, I stayed in a hotel <laughs> that I, would, I normally would have paid in Abuja here, twenty-five thousand naira per room. Mm -hmm. And this, by the time I converted the sifa they were charging me, it was almost like ninety something thousand naira that I'm paying. I have to run away from Kotonou to come back to my country, <laughs> <laughs> to come back to Nigeria, wow. because the naira is one of the worst performing uh, uh -uh. currencies you can think about. Mm -hmm. So these are the things. These are these are the issues. So it's not about asking for. Increase in increase in the minimum, minimum wage. wage. But what can that afford you when you take it home? Mm -hmm. The money is becoming our money is becoming like the Zimbabwean currency. Uh -oh. Where you I, and I can bet you one thing. I can make a prediction for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. By middle of next year, if we keep going the way we are going, I want to tell you that you need a whole bucket of a, a whole bunch of money, <coughs> like five thousand naira, to buy a loaf of bread. <coughs> Just a loaf of bread. You need a bundle of 5,000 naira notes to buy a loaf of bread in this country, the way it is going. Now, a crate of egg is selling for 6,500 to 7,000. You see how the inflation is wiping out everything. Yeah. So let us, I mean, <laughs> think. 6,500. Yeah, for a crate, crate of egg. egg. Yes. 2,000 2, for a family loaf. Well, let's say you're going to have two because, I mean, they're. Not Hungry people to eat in the morning. I'm telling you about so, this. So just for your breakfast, and the breakfast is only bread and only egg. No tea, no butter. No. We're going to spend 11,000. <laughs> it's actually. 500 <laughs> naira. It's actually of Milo. It's about 150 to, one, to 200 naira. Don't even add tea. Don't add milo. So how do you don't think without tea? <laughs> Thank you. Bread without tea. Uh, in secondary <laughs> school, used to be big punishment. My daughter uh, came back from school. Yeah. And she, because she, she was sick. And she told me that they are not offered fruits. This is a school I'm paying about uh, one million naira for her to be in the boarding school, and they're not offered fruits of any kind, not even orange. They used it's to be, but they've now withdrawn. They now withdrawn them yeah. because the school cannot maybe cannot afford it. Yeah. And I said that this PTA meeting, I'm going to go to the PTA meeting myself. I don't want my wife to go anymore. I need to know why you cannot offer them fruits okay. because they say one apple a day take away sickness. True. So how can't you give the children fruits? Mm -hmm. That but they've paid for, that they've already paid for. Yeah, but that's the cost of managing all these things. If family, you go to many families, the cost of living has, people have cut off many things from the menu. And these are the things that are supposed to help, help the children. And especially your health. It's reached a point, like a uh, father was telling me, you know, he said, he, you give your daughter or your, your child, especially in the primary school, 200 naira. And because of the good training you've given them, they'll say, uh, Daddy, thank you. Please, what am I going to use the money for? Nothing. Yeah, the same, but the the tea tea pain, the tea pain is the tea the tea pain is 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 the tea pain the next you know available notes yeah, here's 200. Thank you, daddy. Thank you, mommy. Please, what am I going to use it for? So that's the way the currency is going. We have to really, really look into our economic policies and see how we're going to rejig them because time waits for no man. Okay. I agree with you. So much for that. I think we had promised that we're going to go. Don't forget, like you can see how the numbers are there on your screen. React to any of the headlines. React to anything with it we're discussing with the guests. Or let us know anything about anything you feel about this morning. You're very welcome. This program is yours and it's interactive. Don't forget. Okay, sir. We promised we were going to talk foreign policy this morning. And where else to start from than the captain of foreign policy, and let's call that America, which prides itself as the peace of the world. And Donald Trump, the Don, has been returned as the 47th incoming president of the United States. Ooh, we, we have a caller right here, though. Let me just pause right there and let's see what this caller... Hello, caller. Good morning. Yeah, there's a lot of hallback, so you want to turn down the volume on your device over there first. Okay, do that for me. All right, cool. Let's have your name and where you're calling from.
Oh my goodness, we lost him. Okay, do well to come call back. Maybe while you were turning down the volume, you kind of pressed something or something went wrong. Maybe network, please do well to call back. We are here waiting to hear from you. Okay, so we were saying that Donald Trump has been returned as the next uh, well, incoming president, outgone and then incoming 45th to 47th. Um, did it come as a surprise to you that he won? Um, well, let me begin uh, by saying that the American election was a well contested election. Unlike our own election, the election is, was free, fair, and credible. And uh, we have seen the losers because in every election there must be a winner and there must be a loser. Not only in every election, in every contest. In every contest, there must be a, a loser, winner. there must a be a winner. winner. True. And uh, unlike what happened uh, in 2020 in the United States, we see the loser congratulating the winner. And we see the current president doing everything to hand over and have a peaceful transition. That is welcoming to democracy. I, we, I perso personally am happy about that. And I want to see our own election go up to that level where people begin to have confidence that their vote will cast. Am I happy for Donald Trump? Yes, I'm very happy for him. Because uh, he is a man, even though he could be abrasive, he could, he could uh, be condescending in the way he talks. But this is authentic Donald Trump. It's very authentic. It's very original. He tells you things the way it is. And I think th his victory is not just a triumph. It's not just a trump. It is a, it is a kind of repudiation of what I call OBD, the Obama Biden democratic ideas, which many people we are ashamed to talk about publicly. But America has spoken to show that they resent this work okayism, this extreme liberalism that have to do because the Democrats did not pay attention to the issues that con concern the average American. They were just sticking on demonizing Trump. The man was the DOJ system was weaponized against him. They wanted to send him to prison at all costs. They shot at him. He nearly died. They developed a culture of hate against him. Yet he stood to make history, to become one of the, almost the second president of America that came back from retirement to contest and win election. That's historical. And uh, I'm really happy for him. And I'm looking forward to the fact that he's going to deliver on the mandate because he won convincingly this time around. He won both the electoral votes, which he won by 326 against Kamal Harris, 200 and 212 or 223. That is a wide margin. And he won the popular vote also in millions. That means the Americans actually wanted him back because of his policies, not because of his person. He's not a saint. And like I said, Trump could be abrasive. Trump can be Trump. But with Trump, you know where he stands. He, his message on economic policies, his message on immigration, his message, his message on identity politics, we're all very clear. Americans understood that. Okay, but let's take another mistake. call while we're here. Morning, caller. Hello, good morning, caller. Caller, good morning. Can you hear us? Oh, I think the lines are interfering. We're having a whole lot of trouble here. Anyway, let's continue. I'm having a lot. Oh, it's calls on. Hello, good morning, caller. Fine, thank you. I can see for myself you've struggled a lot to connect with us. Thank you very much. So please, your name, where you're calling from, go straight to it. Now Network is trying to be a little kind. Go ahead. What's your name? Michael Hi, Michael. Go ahead. Good. I am happy that Trump is back. And they said some Nigerians or Nigeria one election in the U.S. I'm happy. What post, please? 
Okay, I might not be able to tell you right offhand. It's not only in U.S., in some other European countries as well. And you might also have heard about um, Kemi Bedenok, who won the party chairmanship first in history. A black person, a woman, and uh, I mean a Nigerian woman for that matter, winning the Conservative Party chairmanship in the U.K. So there, there are lots of things. I might not be able to cat catalog all of them all across the world, as a matter of fact. Thank you very much. They should try to bring their these people so that come to the fair election like they are doing there. I agree with you. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. <laughs> All Thank right. You. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Good morning, caller. Hello, the first thing you're going to do is turn down the volume on your set. There's a hole back. Well, I do well to call back. Uh, one thing you have to do, though, before you even make the call, turn down the volume because there's a hole back. So we end up hearing ourselves instead of hearing you. And you are calling to be heard. So turn it down and then we can hear you clearly thank you very much for that okay like we were saying ambassador you um well he said he's he was he's giving his congratulations to donald trump as well which means uh should i say some people at least are happy that he won but we will now want to look at his foreign policies as affects let's say africa what do you think africans uh what will be the outlook on africa now that he is in position. Let's not forget that during the Obama administration, there was joy and jubilation all over this continent with the feeling that, oh, well, somebody of Kenyan extract has won the American presidency and it's going to be, you know, a softer outlook to the African continent as a whole. And that wasn't the case. As a matter of fact, during Obama's two terms, he did not step foot even in the so-called giant of Africa, that's Nigeria. And we didn't exactly see policies that were like very favorable to Africans, as happened maybe in very past American presidencies, like uh, let's call to mind President Carter, who had clear cut Af favorable African policies. What do you think Africans stand to benefit in this Trump administration? Sorry, just before you answer, let's take another call. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Lost it. You want to call back though. I know network isn't very friendly. We, we are also trying to see how we can boost your audio here. So please do well to call back. So what do you think Africans in general, and maybe Nigeria in particular, can expect from a Trump presidency kicking off to 25? Yes, um, let me begin by saying that one, majority of Ameri America has spoken. They have decided on whom they want as their president. And he won base. Hello, can you hear us? Please continue. Trump won the election based on his electoral campaign. And it was clear that he wanted America first. He wants to make America great again. He wants to make America, which is the most um, powerful nation on earth, which is the leader of the free world, to be respected, unlike what we have had. So, there's a whole lot of problems in America to be fixed. They have the economic crisis, which have blown inflation over the rooftop. Part of the reason Trump won. They have the immigration crisis, the border crisis. We have, we have um, uh, more than 20 million people invading America, not coming in legally. Yeah. And he has to fix that. True. He has promised there will be a massive deportation. Okay. That anybody that is involved in crime, mm -hmm. that is illegal mm -hmm. in America, has to be deported. Yeah. He okay. never said he doesn't want people to come into America. No, he didn't. But he has to come in legally. True. He has the identity politics to deal with. Because over the past years now, mm. we've had men competing in women's sports. All right, please, let's just take this call. Morning. Good morning. Hello. Your name, where you're calling from, straight to the point. Network is not very kind today. <laughs> I'm Fred from Benin, Edo State. Hello, Fred. Go ahead. You see, 
see how fair is American election. Nigeria won is always the case because we bought INEC, we bought judiciary. Injustice is going on in Nigeria, and you want things to work. Nothing will work in a country that does not believe in truth. America believe in truth and they go for it and they get it. A country that always laid a foundation in the 40 grand will always collapse. That is something I just want Nigeria to name. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, and your point taken. I'll be contributing to the program every time that I'm available around. Thank you, Fred. We appreciate your call. Thank you very much. Okay, let's take another one. Another call. Okay, okay Fred. Thank you so much, Fred. Morning. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, Ma. How is work, Ma? Beautiful. I hope yours is going great as well. Uh, we can go tomorrow. Yes, sir. I want to, uh, to respond to what you are discussing in the studio. Oh, right. Please let's have your name first and where you're calling from. Okay, okay sorry, ma'am. My name is Victor Waibello. I'm calling from Kaduna. Go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, uh, this election was taking place in the U.S. And you see, is that what we are, so we are saying? That's actually what country is talking about. It's not what we are passing through here in Nigeria. Just example, what happened in Kaduna State, our the local government in Kaduna State last month. Nothing, no election take place in Kaduna. And uh, the following day we hear the declare all the chairman and the and the, and the, and the, the all the council has win in APC. You understand? Know, we are so great great surprise what how we are going on. And we are passing a lot of help in our, in our nation. We are praying God will help us. Because if this thing continues like this, I'm telling you, my dear sister, I'm in trouble. I'm, I believe God will take control. And I'm praying for our president, Tinibu. Tinibu will work hard, things more better in our nation. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless you. Oh, bless you too, my dear brother Victor Bello, who's called in from Kaduna with uh, good prayers for Nigeria, even as he's advising that it's not only him, but have you noticed it's a trend in all our calls today? Everybody's saying, Can Nigeria look and see? Have we seen an election? Can we see what an election looks like? And I mean, caller after caller, and that reflects, I think, people's moods, and it's 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 quite a I, I would say it's a minus it's a scar on us because in the first place we claim we are practicing the american presidential system of democracy aren't we well but look at what we're having on ground ground you see you there's a whole back just you know reduce the volume on your device please do it before you even call because it interferes I'm only hearing myself. I'm not hearing you. You know what? Do well to call back. Do well to call back so that well, we can hear you. As we proceed, just like the last caller said, um, what we've seen in Nigeria does not, does not just oppose with the American election. But uh, I want you to understand that um, people get a kind of leaders. Our leadership reflects our society. It is not God. God is not in the business of election no. and democracy. God, God is not interested in any election. No. But it is we, Nigerians, that can ask for a credible election. And we can fix Nigeria if we begin now to actually advocate and insist that the election must be free and fair. But whereby you see people steal elections, and you go and congratulate them, and they throw a party and, and they are jubilating. Hello, good morning. Sorry, let's take this call. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Your name and where you're calling from and your contribution. Okay. I'm calling from Oyo. Your name? Sorry, what's your name? Hello. 
Hello, your name, please. My name is Eneo Eko. Eneo. Go ahead. Eneo Eko. Right, go ahead. Okay. The, uh, what I'm saying is we, we should not compare the American system of elections to Nigeria. To, well, uh, American system has been there for a long time. We are just a baby, a baby country in the electoral system. So I believe we are getting there in the future. Okay, let's not compare Nigeria to America. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. I think we should just react straight to what Eneo says because I find his contribution a bit funny. I mean, how long is strange. a long time? Is it's 25 years not it's, long? It's very strange that people are still thinking that. that, that in economics, <laughs> that what we call advantage of a late comma. Yeah, exactly. So a late comma, exactly. you learn from those who came early. Exactly. So it's not the rocket science. All you have to do is pick the blueprint as it is. You don't even have to tweak. You no. don't have to learn. You don't just no. like you call it transfer be, technology. You don't need to be hundred years to to have it. Twenty-five. What is the lifespan of of a Nigerian? As at today, it's about fifty-four to fifty-seven years. So, so if in twenty-five years, out of his fifty-something years, we have this kind of democracy, and it's still not long enough. I find that either, you, bit, have, uh, either that you have integrity or you don't have integrity. Yes. No matter how educated you are, or no matter how old you are, and you lack integrity, you lack integrity. Nigeria simply lack integrity in our election. Yes. And we can decide today to have integrity. The other day I won an election, which he believed was flawed. He set up a pro panel to look at his election, which he believed was flawed, so that he can have a better election. That is how country grows, not by make justifying why you are failing. I mean, that is how taboon come. But then, uh, we're talking about what does Africa have to get from America with Trump winning. Yes. And I will tell you that American policy yes. remains American policy, policy. foreign okay. policy. Right. Right. So and we have a caller. Let's quickly okay. listen to him, okay? Good morning. Good morning, love. How are you today? Fine, thank you. And you, please, your name, where you're calling from, and make your contribution. I got the card. I didn't get your name. Sorry. My name is Titus. Hi, yeah. Titus. Titus. Thank you. All right. Please go ahead. I just want to continue the meeting concerning what you are discussing. Right. Actually, uh, there was a caller that made uh, reference to the kind of uh, uh, politics or democracy we are uh, operating in Nigeria. Um, the last caller made mention of uh, the fact that Nigeria is a baby country. I don't that uh, we don't need to compare Nigeria with America. But from all of that, if you agree with me, that Nigerian uh, government are not open to them. They are not open. Their minds are close to us. Uh, what America is doing. I don't know what to call this kind of system of government we operate in Nigeria. Just like the initial comment make reference to that Nigeria have bought the judiciary, the rule of law, they have bought the military, they have bought the police. In fact, every aspect of um, the system of uh, Nigeria has been hijacked by these politicians. I don't know this kind of system of government they are practicing. I don't see I don't see hope in what we are doing in Nigeria. We just trust that God, by his, uh, in his own infinite mercy and wisdom, will uh, come in in, in in a way that we, uh, the politicians, will less imagine. And that's our prayer. Uh, I don't see any, uh, the military that are supposed to be of help, the judiciary that are supposed to be of help, uh, uh, are not there. So I wonder where our help uh, comes from. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you, Titus, calling from Kaduna. Let's, I just want us to please, let's thrash that little part out. Trump policy as concerns Africa, please. Sorry yeah. for interrupting your thoughts. Yeah, like I said, American foreign policy will mm -hmm. always be American foreign policy. Right. And Trump is clear from day one mm -hmm. that his government is going to be American-centered, make America first, make America great again. So he's going to concentrate his energy and trying to fix America. That does not mean he's going to, he's, he's going to totally ignore 
the other part of the world in foreign policy because in foreign policy is also strong and strategic where you have American interest. Trump is such a guy that if he gives you a medication and the medication is not working for you and he says it's not working for you, he will tell you that something is wrong with you. And if you tell him that the medication doesn't test well in your mouth, he will tell you that something wrong with your test board, <laughs> not the medication. <laughs> so I think Trump is one leader that is want to get African African leaders accountable. He want to get African leaders responsible. And if you're not accountable, you're not responsible in fixing your own country, they don't come to me. But if you are accountable and you are showing transparency and openness in dealing with your own country and country people, Trump will be ready to work with you. So I think what we need to do first is to stop praying. We are praying too much. <laughs> and start working too hard to fix our system. That start is, praying, start working. Start working. Oh because my it was goodness. Paul that says, show, me, show, me your, show me your prayers and I'll show you my work. Show me so, your faith by your works. Honey. Yeah, by your work. So we need to start working hard <laughs> on correcting our system and resetting Nigeria. Oh my and goodness. That, and politicians should understand that politics is not, is, is not just all about winning. It's also about losing. Yeah. So you have to be able to create a fair playing ground. A situation we have in Nigeria today is such that everybody is looking for opportunity to cheat. It is steal. Cheat, to steal and cheat. It is who steal better or who cheat better that got into the position. And how do you expect it to be better that way? So there will be no miracle happening to Africa because of Trump presidency. No, it won't happen. But Trump will definitely want to hold African leaders responsible for the action because they know in America that if you bring in ten thousand dollars into the United States, it is merely flagged. And they know where the money is come from. And they know who has the money. And these Nigerian politicians will steal Nigerian money, billions of naira, convert it into dollars, move into the American bank. They know all about these things. And I'm happy that in your intro you said Obama was there for eight years. What did he do for Africa? This is a black man from Kenya. What did he do to our Africa? He didn't lift up his soil no. on Nigerian soil. He did nothing. The only thing that Obama did for Africa is to want to legitimize LG LGBT identity politics in Africa as a condition for aiding Africa. That's not our culture. He says so in Kenya. He says so in Uganda. And that extended to, be, to Joe Biden. Kamala Harris was in Ghana. They wanted just $150 million in AIDS. And he tied it to legalizing LGBT. We know that during Obama time, Nigeria was flagged for different reasons, for God knows what. We were denied arms to fight insurgency and all what not. He did not do anything for us. So if, if those who are black people are not who doing claim to love, didn't do anything for us, what do you expect from the man you call a redneck <laughs> to do something? Uh, the man that is, you know, that is abrasive <laughs> Hello, you know, to do what for you. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Morning. Where are you calling from? Give us your name and your contribution. Um, I'm Raimi from Abuja. Raimi? Yes. Abuja. Yes. Shoot. Good morning. Morning. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, quickly, I want to talk about the report from the security. Okay. Nigeria security said they, they discovered the new uh terrorist terrorist group it's called lakurawa and i'm wondering are they supposed to tell us that they discover or they should wipe them out when you discover a terrorist as a responsible government as a responsible agent what are you supposed to do are you telling nigerians to go and wipe them out why what is the essence of intelligence so they discovered and they are telling us to do what now? I don't really, I don't get why, why this country is existing. I don't get it. I don't get it. The citizen is to pay their tax, which I do pay. And I, I know many Nigerians pay, especially in this government. We are being forced to do it, whether we like it or not. So exactly what is the what is the job of the government? Thank you. 
Thank you, Raimi. Sobering thoughts there from uh, Abuja, right here in the Federal Capital Territory. Responding to the new security uh, threat that we're having in the country, this Lakurawa terrorist group. You would have thought people would have been grouping for some noble, <laughs> some noble way out of our economic woes and crisis. But here we have people grouping to terrorize the other Nigerians who are already suffering anyway. Well, let's see how... That boils down to the same thing I'm talking about. Policies. With regards to Trump policies. Trump, Trump believes in peace other than war. True. So he will expect the Nigerian government to fix their security situation. No responsible government will tell us that terrorists have overtaken Nigeria and we are still a government in power. And we have been dealing with this issue of terrorism for God knows when. From I think Basanja's time yeah. to Jonathan to Buhari to Tinubu now. It is even expanding that no part of Nigeria is safe anymore. Yeah. And terrorism terrorism is growing strength. And Trump will expect you to go and fix your terror your, your security issues. Because you have the army, you have the police, you have the intelligence, we have everything. And budget are being allocated to this things. And people are being recruited to serve in this. You know. I begin to wonder whether there is a conspiracy between the terrorists and Nigerian government to destroy Nigeria and to kill Nigerians. Like the caller said, what are you telling us? What do you want me to do? I don't have gun, I don't have machete, I don't have anything. You have every other weapon, you have every if you don't have, ask. And it will be given to you. Go and fight them and wipe them out. Nigerians are sick and tired of uh, being told, oh, we discovered this and we discovered that. What well, Trump will expect from Nigeria, and let me tell you, the best way to deal with Trump and get something out of him is to seduce him. Fix yourself first. Make yourself look better. Stop stealing your country's money. Use your money, your resources to develop your country. And you will see Trump welcoming you and coming after you. I want you to do business with you. But his primary interest is America first. And I don't blame him. Let's make Nigeria first. Nothing stop our leaders from making Nigeria first. Nothing stop our National Assembly, our House of Rep and, and the Senate from being proactive in making the executive government to work. They don't need to be a rubber stamp for the executive government. Nothing stop our judiciary from calling spade a spade from giving judgment that can stand the scrutiny of time and law. But right now, everything seems to have collapsed into one that we don't even know where to start and where to end. Mm -hmm. Nigerians are sick and tired. And all these complaints that you are hearing now, we are something that people were bef before was in memory. Now the, uh, the, the complaints are becoming louder and louder and louder every day. And I'm wishing that the government is listening, taking the pulse of the nation, and be able to do something right about all these situations. Because when you combine the economic situation that people are going through yes. with insecurity again, with unstable politics, for you're talking about 250 million people, where would they go to? If the, if the bubble doesn't burst now, it might burst tomorrow. And I don't want the bubble to burst. Because it will be more dangerous for us. So all we need to do is to cut down on our greed as politicians and begin to work for the happiness of the people. And we can do that. It's possible we'll do that. Because most of these politicians, what, the way they are living their life, they don't need it. The kind of money they are stealing is causing them cancer, diabetes, and their blood pressure. They are dying young. Not of them are living up to 90 years. Upon all the money. Money can buy them life. So let them think about the people. If you think about the people and begin to remove some of these excessive words, that you've gotten corruptly. You find yourself living long because you don't have any, any yoke bothering you anymore. So what I'm saying in essence is that don't expect any miracle from Trump if you don't fix Nigeria. You fix Nigeria, Trump will welcome you with a good handshake and thank you. But if you don't fix Nigeria, don't expect to see him or even for him to come. Because he got, a, he got some problems in America to fix. His mandate, his mantra is America first. Make, make America great again. And that's where he's focused on. And that's a whole lot of issue. Because things have gone south over the years in America.
Okay, please let me just pick your brains on one final topic as we're really winding down and winding out of time, especially with interesting topics like this one. And that is the so-called elusive peace in the Middle East. Uh, what do you think Trump, because he's very interested in, in uh, like he said, he's a man of peace, he doesn't want war. But this war has been ongoing, it has defied several American presidents who tried everything, different camps, Camp David, Camp this, the other. And um, so far, no show. What do you think a Trump presidency will bring to bear on the uh, quest for peace in the Middle East? That's your final take. Uh, well, I will tell you one thing that is very clear in the Middle East is that it has been one of these areas that has been very un um, unrestful to the world and a concern to both America and the world. And um, a Trump presidency will also want to see a stable Middle East. There's no doubt that um, um, Trump will be allied to Israel, but Trump also will not want the war in Gaza to continue because inside him he believes that uh, the goals have been accomplished and he, we would like to see israeli and palestinians live side by side as neighbors peacefully a situation where you have terrorists grooming children from their infancy on on culture of hate is totally wrong you have lebanon government solidarity to hezbollah to a terrorist group to now control your your space i think this is uh, israel has dealt with it and i, I understand that uh, Trump and the Israeli Prime Minister have spoken and he told him it's time to end the war. And I think that's why most of the Arabs in America voted for him this time around because they also want to see the war come to an end. And likewise the Ukrainian war. And he has told them to think about peace. Don't think too much about territory. Without peace, territory means nothing to you. And the same thing is going to happen in uh, Gaza and uh, Lebanon and Iran and all those places. Right. They should learn how to live peacefully, peacefully with uh, one another. Israel as a nation actually doesn't seek for war. They seek peace because it is their own interest to have peace with their neighbors. And I think with Trump presidency, there will be a wind down of the war in the Middle East and uh, maybe suspended the limit for the period that he's there until some other person comes in because for trump there will be an end to that war because it's costing america a lot and be the businessman that wants to save money and cut on, cut on the budget deficit he doesn't want to rush more <laughs> money overseas <laughs> overseas <laughs> and so for that reason alone Yes. The like you said, you know, that's the kind of president we probably need because our own, for whatever reason, is the opposite. We would love to rush money, do you know, to help Niger, help the Sudan, help the other, and we're here starving. <laughs> we don't know our, 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 our leaders don't love our leaders don't love inflation is spiraling but uh, good our leaders don't them here the next one in a, our leaders don't love one republic people. of congo and all the money just gets channeled there well, yeah, so that is it. it's been so interesting at least for me speaking with you ambassador aguiri Ag ambassador agree yes clan did i get yeah you got that right i agree with my nonsense just remember to my nonsense you get the pronunciation okay. right all oh, right okay a big clap for myself thank you yeah. very much for appearing <laughs> thank you Mickey. and i hope when next we call you here we can continue this discussion and for those of you who called in those of you who tried uh, we could see the screen really you know flipping over your calls that was network we're very sorry about that but for those of you who called and contributed thank you very very much this is an interactive program and that's how it's going to be tomorrow morning and on every weekday. So don't forget to stay with your darling station, Kaftan Television. My name is Miki Atta. I want to first of all thank uh, all of those in the production team who did very well to make sure you got this program live. Let me start by thanking Bright Chuku Ebue. Thank you very much, Bright. Let me thank the man we call Mr. Sue, Mr. Suleiman. Thank you very much. All of you in production, you did a fantastic job. Okay, so we come your way again tomorrow morning. This is the press. But do stay on with Captain Television. We have lots of programs lined up for you. In the meantime, have a very fruitful, wonderful, prosperous, nice start to the week. God bless you. Thank you. Bye-bye.